Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos and we're continuing our in HTML5 Android app development course. So on the last video I talked about using the Android SDK manager to update your code and I said also please select the Intel x86 Atom system image and the Intel x86 emulator accelerator. So after we've set that up, we want to go back to the SDK Manager and go to the Tools menu at the top and select Manage AVDs. These are the Android virtual devices. So you do not need a real Android device to take this class or to do any Android development. You can use a virtual Android device that runs on the computer. You can do this also on the Mac and on a Linux box. So once I load this up, it says I have no devices at the moment. So we'll select the top tab of device definitions. These are sort of our templates. These are a variety of name brand and generic Android devices. For example, the Nexus S or a 4.7 inch device or a 10 inch tablet or so. Uh, developing with Android usually means creating at least one virtual device because even if you have a shiny new Galaxy S5, you might not have a, a an Android tablet or perhaps a 10-inch or 7-inch device. Or maybe you want to see the performance of your app on an old 2.7-inch Android. So we create virtual devices to test on different uh, on different real devices. In this class, I'm going to recommend to create sort of a low-end device just to see if your computer can handle the virtual device, even though it's a mobile phone with a relatively small amount of RAM and hard drive space. Uh, it might not run very efficiently on your desktop computer because it's just simply different architecture, different type of RAM, different type of CPU. So we'll start with this lower-end one. The fourth one from the bottom, 3.2 inch QVGA ADP2, click it once to select, and then on the right side select Create AVD. There's various parameters we can set. You can give it a name, I'll leave the default. Device, I'll leave that, that's my starting template. Target, you may get the option either for Android API or Google API, doesn't matter, but I'll keep it on Android. CPU, very important. As I said earlier on a previous video, uh, our home computer CPU is different than most mobile devices, uh, so we want to select the Intel Atom CPU type so that this emulated device runs a bit faster. Leave these two boxes checked on, the hardware keyboard present and display a skin. That way you'll be able to use your keyboard to type words instead of using the mouse. And with the skin, you'll have the buttons that sort of looks like a real device. You can test the camera app in the virtual device, but you have to select either an emulated or your real webcam. And if you do select a camera, you want to select under the SD card, you want to add uh, a virtual SD card so it can store your pictures. I'm not going to select a camera for the moment, therefore I don't need any SD card storage. Leave the default of RAM alone because this is going to reserve RAM for the virtual device from your computer. And if you've only got, let's say, 3 gigabytes of RAM, this is going to take uh, some from your main RAM and it's, it'll make your whole system slower overall. So the default amount of RAM suggested is fine. 200 megabytes internal storage is fine. We're not going to be installing a lot of stuff on this virtual device. And then we've got a couple of options. Snapshot. Uh, emulator state will be persisted between emulator executions. Basically, it's going to be frozen states where we make changes to our app and it'll be frozen at a certain point. And you can come back to that state and it's a little advanced, which we'll come back to later. The use host GPU might help you uh, if your virtual device runs a bit slow. So don't turn this on yet. After we test our virtual device, you can come back and turn this on if everything feels sluggish. At this point I will click OK. 
you'll get a pop-up screen that says this is what you did alright good thank you click OK and now you've got one virtual device listed here you want to select it and click start There's a few options which we'll look at in more detail later but go ahead and launch and you'll see these emulators up you may get a couple of other messages depending on your CPU on a variety of options of uh, of factors actually your CPU your RAM the age of your computer etc this next step might actually go quickly or very slowly what you should see eventually is a screen that pops up where you will have a virtual Android device running in your computer so that you can test the apps and such that you're about to create. So on a side note, I'm looking at the performance of my computer. Here's my memory, hard drive, CPU. You're going to see that as you run these virtual devices, your computer, see that spike right there, your computer is probably then going to uh, run into performance issues so I had a spike in RAM usage then I had also a spike in CPU usage and then the hard drive is was also uh, a lot of activity the point is that your virtual device may run uh, slowly if it's an older device mine eventually loaded up here did you see it had the Android startup screen and then we get to this home screen make yourself at home so this is our virtual device I can click OK with the mouse takes me to my home screen I can click and drag to swipe just like a real device I can click this home button to take me back home I can click the apps button in the middle to launch all my apps So I feel my virtual device is running pretty smoothly. I can go from screen to screen. It's very responsive. Animations look nice. So hopefully your own virtual device is also running just about this smoother or better. I would also load up the web browser and browse the web a little bit. This is going to be a real web browser. We can search here, uh, for example, SDCE this is our college and I am connecting to the internet and this is a real connection and so I'm just testing my virtual device I can go back home I can play with volume buttons I can load up my options menu go into system settings a virtual device, an Android virtual device, call up search and even put it to sleep. When I wake it up, it'll ask to unlock, so just swipe to unlock. And so this is what we're going to use throughout the course to test our apps, especially if you don't have a, an Android device, a real Android device, if you've got an iPhone, Windows phone, etc., or if you want to test your app on a tablet. So we've got our first virtual device running. If this is very slow, if everything is choppy, animations are bad, you can go back to your virtual device manager, select the device, edit, and turn on use host GPU. You might get a smoother experience. If you don't, there's not much I can do. You might have an older computer, not enough RAM, um, your CPU might be a bit old so there's not much I can say about that maybe ask Santa for a new computer next time and you'll be able to do Android development a lot smoother so come back for the next videos where we go more in-depth with Android app development